I think Agentic AI, it's important because it's the future of how applications we build. Great to see you, Gabriele. We're here at DTW. It's, it's a very buzzy show, and there's been a lot of noise here about Indeed. Agentic AI. Absolutely. You've had an announcement? Uh, yes, we are introducing our um, Blue Planet Agentic AI framework. Um, which is called actually AI Studio. Um, and we are providing an open framework to provide our own AI agents in the space that we work in, operational support system, inventory, orchestration, assurance, but more so providing a platform and environment to build on top of the data sets and the applications that we provide in the industry. So uh, a carrier can build on top of them? Absolutely, or? not just carriers, but also our partners, system integrators. Um, and this is a dynamic that we see in the industry, in the telco industry anyhow, where you require extensibility. So we provide a software platform, but we have always been following um, an open API paradigm, right? So we are here at TMF, MF APIs, MEF and so forth. I think this is translating into this new world of agentic, mm. which means now you can access uh, data set and services and develop on top. Mm. So absolutely our customers would want to CSPs uh, develop on top and enrich the data sets they have in Blue Planet, combining with some other data sets. Bringing it all together. Yeah, uh, we believe in this cross-domain, cross-application automation. In fact, there's no autonomous network scenario that doesn't cross the boundary. You know, there's a lot of talk at the show about this right now. Uh, and we actually see many of the new protocols, even in the agentic space, uh, basically forming and fostering collaboration between, for example, OSS, Operation Support Systems, mm -hmm. and BSS agents. So that's the, how I think the integration between applications will evolve over time. Blue Planet and Sienna have been doing AI for seven years. Does that give you an advantage? Yeah, I think so. First of all, AI is a large body of, of functionalities uh, from machine learning, reinforced learning, generative AI, and now, of course, agentic AI emerging. I think it's not just the fact that we've been working in AI, both on the Siena side and Blue Planet side, but also the fact that we have invested in true cloud native mm. architecture. Uh, and that happened across the portfolio. Uh, we believe in a coordinated approach across different systems. And otherwise you tend to innovate in silo and we tried to break the barrier two, three years ago. And so now you have a cloud layer. Now you can add an AI layer or machine learning layer, a data fabric layer. Now you can build reasoning agents that basically can really tap into what we call an OSS knowledge graph, mm -hmm. where you bring together not just data, but even the constructs, the attributes, the entity, the relationships of network elements, services, service models, and the different topology concepts yeah. as well. I know some of the uh, way in which you're delivering Agentic AI differs from some of the other companies who are doing it. You're pre-packaging some of the components of this. It's almost like a composable architecture. Is that right? Yes. I don't believe in providing a, an embedded and siloed uh, type of architecture. Um, because we see that um, at the end of the day, implementation will require integration with multiple players. So what are we doing? Step one, building an agentic framework that lays at the, uh, at the core of all our systems. Step two, exposing many of the core native OSS services uh, with the new protocols that now are being consumed by by agents and agentic frameworks. So in this way, we can embed some agents in the Blue Planet application, uh, because of course you can automate processes that you could not automate in the past. But then allow that composability that you mentioned 
to build on top and allow again customers to build top of that. What's the end goal of all of this for, for carriers? There is an incredible pressure in saving money. And if you look at the OPEX crunch, uh, which is happening, it's something that uh, I personally haven't seen uh, uh, before in telco. We've always experienced pressure. We always experienced the, uh, you know, the need of optimizing. But unlike before, I just seen this being elevated to the end level. It's almost existential, isn't it? It is, and there's a positive aspect to this. It's not the business as usual cutting the 5, 10, 15 percent of OPEX or CAPEX or processes. It's, it's forcing the discussion about re-architecting the processes, rethinking the operating models. And so we, the, in, even in the opportunities we're in, it's really not about replacing this for that, but it's looking at a North Star mm -hmm. and rethinking of how process should be. Because otherwise, you cannot really go into that 30, 40% that sometimes they're required to cut. 